This next gentleman tells wonderful stories. He's also a wonderful artist. Clayton Buchanan. This first piece, um, it's been in my head for quite a while. Uh, over the last several days, I've actually put it down and brought it to life in a sense. Uh, there might be some disturbances in it, but I want to share it with you anyway. And it's entitled, Our Future. The darkened, cloudy evening of life is upon us, the full extent not known as yet, but looking forward to a sunshining morning to come is within us all if we so choose. The downtrodden naturals of our country and certain countries of the world encompasses us continuously, being openly sought after and discussed, but seldomly resolved in a responsible realm. Our vast stated country is rated 21st worldwide in outreaching and offering civil rights for all. Openness and acceptance to differences can be the saving grace of lives. Refusing outright to share can become catastrophic and at the very least be most graciously ignored. Under our volatile administration's dominating directions, Many world countries are isolating us in regard to working with. Much needs to be done, and we as a country are now faultlessly excusing ourselves from accepting human responsibility. Immigration has been an ongoing theatrical issue for years. Let us not ever forget our country was formed by those dear, brave souls looking to find and feel a broader life and brighter future. Opening locked doors to differences is a necessary learning task that is not easy, but the jeweled rewards far outweigh the rampant difficulties that will show themselves. George Washington was vehemently against party backroom politics, vocally stating it was not the true meaning of democracy, of the people, by the people, for the people. Fighting those dark revolutionary war days allowed us to develop our democracy, but only to a very limited degree. The Civil War developed a strong push for racial equalization, but the end to slavery was just in the beginning. Survival alone was a struggle for many during those war years. Our written constitution stated that democracy was the goal to follow but power, domination, and greed were prevalent then, as were those who did care for humanity. Have we ever had a true blossoming democracy for all, or is it still a conscious dream for our future, well worth fighting for through perseverance and outreach, but not through the taking of innocent human lives where collateral damage should be not excusable? Defending our country from a physical attack is an agonizing exception to the rules of war. To this day, human equalization is still not actively accepted. I realize that I am not a true activist, but so wish that war was not the only prevalent answer for peace and acceptance toward the possibility of a living togetherness. As a last mention, let us never forget the horrific horrors face painted across the American Indians that we, as a nation, tortured, killed, and imprisoned on reservations for our own ludicrous gain. Indeed, they did strike out to try and save their right to life. This is the perspective for survival, but to this day, across all boundaries, we have not learned enough sequentially from what true history has shown us not to do. Our country is dominated by two political parties, Republicans versus Democrats, or vice versa, that are swayed by high-ranking, tiptoeing, prolific corporations seeking power and monetary gain at any cost. In all honesty, there are few good intentions that outreach a helping hand 
to associations and persons in need, but other squanderers do not. I am tired of politics of today in its limited representation of our broad society and the forced directions to benefit their own agendas. Each and every one of us should have the right to vote for our personal choices. The Electoral College took that right away, even though they pontificate otherwise. There are approximately 28 state registered political parties across our vast country, having different agenda directions, some more radical than others, but they do have the right to represent within certain nonviolent, non-degrading guidelines. Everyone and all has the right to be heard. The wonderful possibility of having an annual open national convention for each party to attend and express their beliefs sounds too good to be true, but indeed, is it? There will always be hurdles to overcome, but I think we are in the near mental workout shape to explosively leap over these hurdles and win that forgotten race for national democratic freedom, never even thought of before to be in the bright stars of possibility this given day and time. Outreach, openness, understanding and acceptance should be our targeted answers. But first, we must ask the right questions to those who deserve to be heard, and in doing so, be open to what we hear in return and attentively respond in an inclusive manner to all. Thank you. Right. This next piece is uh, a little different, and uh, it's uh, a piece that I put in the category of remembrances. Uh, and this takes place back when I was a, a little boy. It's entitled Peacocks of Yesteryear. I had an uplifting remembrance some days ago when per perusing a popular TV episode. I cannot recall the title of what it was, but when I saw this isolated, distant image profiled some hundred yards in the distant meadowed field background, I was taken back in time to those late 1940 years during my early childhood. I would often walk to the Overton Park Zoo in Memphis, Tennessee by myself to see those incredible wild creatures that truly mesmerized my being. We lived maybe a half a mile away and my parents were never worried for my safety in those days. The park, much larger than the zoo, was never my intriguing focus, but the zoo was always, days and weekends each and every summer. Peacocks were these images of total fascination. Strolling freely, they would throughout the zoo, emanating their beautiful essence of form and color, the zoo being fenced in, allowing their open wandering. I first saw these birds of beauty with their feathered tails trailing behind, at times touching the ground. The miraculous extended fanning of their extruding feathered tails, never knowing when this would happen, so included such colorful blue and green nuances of variety, always grabbed my questioning attention immediately. They never seemed to fear those of us attending as we envisioned our surroundings. This allowed me to actually feel that I was an accepted part of their physical world. I learned later, after questioning my mother, that the male birds were those who fanned their tails to attract the females for acceptance during their mating period. The extended beauty of these delicious designs of these feathers, when spread, included what resembled wide open eye imagery, randomly placed, starting at the top tips of those miraculous tail feathered extensions. While wandering the zoo one day, I saw for the first time one of those exquisite long tail feather beauties lying silently by itself on the ground. Hesitating, I did not as I reached down and touched this creation from life Picking up, I did, realizing the eye imagery at its end was at me gazing. Over the next days, I collected more of these fallen feathers, taking them home and placing them in my bedroom wherever I could stick them, giving me a feeling of continued growth, remindful of wherever they had come. 
I don't remember how long this zoo fascination lasted, but there then came a day when my family moved out of state. Rarely, if ever, did I visit that zoo again. Some 68 years later, after recognizing this peacock image on TV, I can still envision those brightly colorful, prolific peacock beings of yesteryear and the true wonder life has to offer this and every day. How and why these thoughts are brought back now, I have no answers for, other than accepting the questioned trigger that is at that one special moment in time. Thank you. Okay. Do I have time for another short one? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, this piece is entitled, The Wondrous World. Flying through the logistics of life is a brilliant breeze, at times becoming a treacherous tornado, never lasting life's length, securing a driving diversity, giving a fabulous feeling of serene security. A marvelous miracle of tumultuous times pushes our pathway to the revered road of succulent success. Do we have a chosen choice to live a losing life? Or is it an airborne adventure meant to motivate moments of flatulent failure rising repeatedly to the longevity of love and dreams? This wondrous world of colossal cultures can motivate mankind only if the warbles of womankind are robustly recognized to their flooring, flowering fullness. We must audaciously accept those regardless of dynamic differences. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.